Hi, I'm Birdman Mel. Good morning. I am so happy you are here on this beautiful morning. I know that in many areas, it's like here, it's probably sunny, so we juiced it up for you to make it worth you spending these 30 minutes. We're not only going to have our usual fun, we're going to make you smile, lots of great info. We're giving away over a thousand dollars worth of prizes today, so stay tuned, okay? We're going to have a lot of fun together. I was so happy. First thing this morning as I had my coffee on the deck, the hummingbirds were buzzing by and a couple Orioles scolded at me. So spring is in the air and that means love is in the air. And that means this guy here, my favorite bird, guess what I saw him doing right outside my window? He was giving his mate a little bit of seed. And as my wife says, oh yeah, that's going to last about as long as, you know, till he gets what he wants. But you know, it's a great thing to feed the birds in the spring and summer. You'll get to see them bring their young in to do. So this is worth listening to. You'll get some great tips to enjoy with your kids and grandkids. We are also going to cover Western songbirds. And we're going to start a little bit on naturescaping, or really I call it birdscaping your yard. So it'll be a lot of fun. So stay tuned. We're going to have some fun. This could be, you may be watching a historic broadcast. This could be our last one here. They're kind of fixing me a little studio, I guess, over at the Goldcrest Warehouse. So uh, I just want to say a special thanks to my wife, Bev, and my daughter, Becky. They're here this morning, and they've been here for all these broadcasts. So hopefully they get their uh, basement back next week. But we're going to have a fast, fun-filled 30 minutes. I said prizes. Hey, yep, there you are. I see you out there. We're going to be giving away, like we always do, a $160 pair of optics. And I'll be answer, asking you a question that will involve something in this session at the end of the thing. So let me know uh, the answer, and you could be the one that wins it. Some of the other ways you win is tell us where you live. A whole bunch of you in Missouri will, will be in a drawing. Everybody else outside the U.S. will be in a drawing. And the grand prize is going to be a hanging tray feeder with a roof, along with some Cardinal Chorus uh, feed and a sun catcher. I love the stained glass. You'll see some other pieces and it's Mother's Day coming up, so a great, great way to win some free prizes. And, you know, the best way to win a really big prize is like us. Tag a friend, and you'll be in a drawing for... Beck, hand me over that, that sun... Uh, we have a, a beautiful, oh, glass bird bath. How about that? Yeah. I don't think I could wear it like that. Yong, yong, yong. Nope, shouldn't do that. But uh, these guys, what I like is the depth is right. They don't look like China birds. And Beck, let me see that stand real quick over there, too. The thing I like is we made that stand where it folds up, put it away in the wintertime, but it's just the right height above the flower bed. So many bird baths, they look like, what are you trying to do, launch that thing to the moon? But let's get on to the subject matter at hand, and we're going to have some fun talking about cardinals. And, you know, I use this book all the time, C is for cardinals, and this is the day this book rocks. And it says, young cardinals have gray bills, mommy and daddy have red bills, a cardinal looks like it wears a black mask. Pretty good way to teach one of your children how to do it. And of course, like everybody else, and I'm using Margaret Cobain's uh, ornaments that the uh, National Wildlife Federation loves, and we do too. You know, the male is the bright one, and the female is the one not so bright. But notice, those black masks are the same, and the bills are just like what the book said. So, great stuff. I love Stan Keeler's uh, book. And by the way, he's going to be on a week from Tuesday in our new Ask the S Experts Night, so be stay tuned for that. And, of course, all your local retailers that have access to our tips for attracting cardinals. And the reality is, folks, you know, you want to check out that local wild bird supplier, nursery hardware store, because they know just darn near as much as old Birdman Mel, and they have products at great prices that you won't beat on the Internet or anywhere else. But most of all, they have the advice and service to go with it. So make sure you check them out, and make sure you watch for our other experts, because the following week we're going to have folks talking about how to pick out a set of optics, whether you're young, old, and uh, how to use them. And then the next week we're going to have a, a couple do an incredible session on wood ducks. They know more about wood ducks than anybody I know in the world. So, so a new part of this Birdman Mail thing, and this thank you for joining the first one on BirdmanMail.com and Birdman Mail Facebook page like you did today. But we're going to be adding some other things. So. Watch the schedule, you're going to like it, okay? So let's talk cardinals. It's America's favorite bird. Question, you'll win a prize if you get it. How many birds use a cardinal as their state bird? Okay, more than you might think. And you know one thing I love about the cardinals is these two guys are loyal to each other. They're a good bird to use to teach good values to your children. 
The male and the female, they tend to, most of the time, stay made it long term and, you know, stay pretty darn loyal. They will, in the wintertime, join up with other birds, chickadees, nuthatches, whatever, and do feeding flocks. But come the springtime, these two say, yo, man, this little part of Birdman Mel's yard, this is where we're going to nest, okay? And speaking of nesting, got another question for you. What size of opening is in a cardinal birdhouse, okay? Might not be what you think. You know, we've talked about you need an inch and a half for bluebirds, an inch and a quarter for chickadees, an inch and an eighth for, uh, for the little wrens. What does a cardinal need? Well, it was a trick question. They don't nest in nest boxes, okay? They nest in trees, usually, you know, four to eight feet up or in bushes. So having a lot of native trees is the best way you can get uh, in bushes and things in your yard, get cardinals to nest there, okay? So uh, just a fun fact there, they have been as high as 40 feet, so, you know, but they, they tend to be down lower. And, uh, oops, oh my gosh, I got somebody slipped this in there. We do have breaking news. Those of you who've been watching knows that I had a gang of squirrels, Harry and Houdini, two awful squirrels, kidnapped me, robbed the ATM. You know, we paid a ransom and they got away. Well, the Mexico area police have just told me there is a high likelihood they will be apprehended and arrested today. So stay tuned, keep watching birdmanmail.com, and you'll see when and where hopefully they will finally get those bandits. But let's keep talking cardinals. If you live, you know, from like the South Dakotas, Colorado, Oklahoma, East, you've got those those birds in your area, and there's a little stretch along the border that you get them to. Uh, those of you to the west, we're going to be talking about some other birds out your way, but a lot of the same things we talk about on cardinals, you guys need to consider for gross beaks that you have out there. And really, a lot of the birds, same things you do for cardinals will help get them, okay? But, uh, you know, nesting, I've already told you, you know, where they nest. And an interesting thing, as I was studying for this, that I forgot about, but like in a lot of species, the, the female nest is a little flimsy. Sometimes it don't hold up so good. You can tell you've got an experienced or an older cardinal. When that nest is really, really put together, it's one that will survive a storm. So just a little, little tip there. And they'll do one to three broods a year, and they'll have two to five, normally three to four eggs. And it takes about 14 to 16 days to brood and about the same amount of time before they fledge. Okay? And when I say fledge, that's when the baby birds go, Ooh, thanks, Mom, but... You know what happens is dad and mom, they keep feeding those babies, and that's when you get to see them give, you know, teach the baby how to eat that sunflower kernel you put out or take a little bite of that suet. So it's a fun, fun time to sprint in the springtime and feed the birds. And uh, I did want to remind you, everybody can win, uh, you know, the next few weeks. Share a picture of your cardinal. Share a film strip. And we're going to send you this free water bottle. Got a little hook on it, got a little brush on it. So don't forget that. We had a deal where you send something in on a squirrel, and that's still going on too. You'll get a water bottle. It could be this or a hummingbird bottle. If you got hummingbirds, hey, same deal. Send in some photos and videos. We learn from each other, folks. And same way on butterflies. So, And I am lining up a butterfly expert to be with us on one of these uh, Saturdays or Tuesday nights. So we're going to have some fun and, and some things I talk about late in the show today really do apply to helping you attract butterflies. Somebody just uh, asked a question, best food for a cardinal, and we're going to hit that in just a little bitty bit, okay? Uh, so, uh, you know, the other thing I didn't want to forget is tag a friend, tell them you like us. You're going to be in for one of our grand prize drawings. And right on time, thanks, Bell, for giving me that note. When in doubt, feed this seed right here. And I don't know if you can see it good, but it's black oil sunflower seed. But if you could look at it good, you'd notice it's 99% clean. It's not got a bunch of trash in it. That's the kind of stuff you get from a local supplier. The other thing it is, and I think we're having a little technical problem. We tried to zoom in. And we'll just pause for a second. It's no problem. You getting there, Miss Beck? Okay. Uh, and thank you for trying to do that. Uh, the black oil sunflower seed is your best value in seeds. Don't worry about it. Uh, just buy it from a local vet, vendor or a supplier you know. But there are some other things you can mix in it that the Cardinals like. But I'm running an ad right now getting ready to in our local Columbia market. And it says, let the chickadee tell you. And bottom line is, you put out some of that kind of cheap stuff. You buy in them big old box stores where I don't like going there. And put out seed from a local guy. The chickadee will tell you, hey, this one's heavier. It's, it, I like it better. It's got more oil in it, so there is difference in sunflower seeds. The other thing that's, that they like a lot, Beck, can you hand me that one on the corner, is safflower seed. 
And it is a white seed that, um, that fortunately, the grackles don't like. So those of you that are getting plagued by them blackbirds, this is one of the solutions. And squirrels don't seem to like it as good. So that is one of the reasons we put that seed in what we call Cardinal Chorus. But it's not the name and what we have that's important. It's what you ask for at your local supplier. And most all of them will be like me. They'll have safflower in here. And then we also put fine uh, uh, just pieces of the sunflower heart with the shell off as a little treat. And I'm probably going to go ahead and add a few nut pieces in because I normally do that. We don't have it in our mix right now. And all our mixes are formulated for central Missouri area, just like most of your local suppliers have a mix that's right for your part of the world. Uh, but uh, those are the ingredients in the seed mix that Cardinals really like. White millet, I've told you over and over, that stuff don't belong in most mixes. It goes on a ground tray for native sparrows and the indigo bunting sweet some. But for Cardinals, those are the ingredients they like. Uh, and some of those ingredients are also in what many of us call a patio mix or a shell-free mix. My wife doesn't like them black walls sprouting everywhere, so we, we go to a mix that's got just uh, nut pieces in it and, uh, and those sunflower chips. And I'll tell you what, my cardinals like that, and so does everything else. You, you do kind of got to keep this rascal in a squirrel-proof feeder, though, because they come and get it. And on one last thing, and, you know, Birdman don't really does use what he says. Pulled this off the deck. Had a cardinal mad at me. There was a male and a female eating together there right before I grabbed it. And uh, there are some great seed cakes. We happen to really love a couple, a Superior Berlin one from Pine Tree Farms that put in this uh, recycled uh, plastic feeder. And man, the cardinals and a whole lot of other birds, woodpeckers, nut hatches, everybody likes that thing. So keep that in mind. But it's also not just about the, uh, the seed you feed. I find it, and you, you uh, will see on the fo photo behind me, that they eat a lot of fruit. They eat apples, too, that I put out for a lot of birds. And this neat little apple holder that kind of a heart, you know, real, real little present for mom or a teacher or something. So don't forget they eat apples, and they also really like that birdberry jelly we put in. You know that secret recipe of, of grape and blackberry? Oh, my gosh. They, you know, they think like, ooh, this is like ice cream for me, you know. So don't forget that you can put out, make sure it's got no sucrose in it, though. We don't want to hurt them. Uh, it's got to be all natural if you make your own, uh, you know, just real fruit, real blackberries, real, real grapes. Uh, but it ain't worth the hassle. We done figured out the right mix. But, you know, we're here to help you no matter how it goes. So those are some fun things as far as feed. What would I feed it in? Well, the main thing I like to feed it in, uh, this one I took off the deck. This tray feeder up top I like a lot. Can you see it all right, Miss Beck? Is it showing up in the camp in the video? Okay. And we got a little cover on it, and I put this in here to remind me when I get done, I'm gonna use this brush and this carefree bird bath protector. You know, now it's been about 20, 25 days. I normally clean them every 30 days. But my cardinals will actually go in here. And right now, because this hangs right over my patio where I have a, a barley pop once in a while, I put this seed hoop we got underneath of it. And I find my cardinals feed down here, and oh my gosh, when I got kernels in it, it is full of goldfinches right now. We'll break gold. So, uh, Ms. Beck, I'll give you this. And Beck does a great job being our in-house producer and also Vanna at the same time. So that sort of tray I love. I also like tube feeders that have a tray, and this is one that's recycled. We like, and I hang this rascal up here so the cardinals get to hit with our stained glass plant hook. Ms. Beck, I'm going to keep you busy right now for a while, okay? And a couple feeders you don't think of as cardinals is I've used this feeder from Aspects to keep birds out. To, when I have it, you know, when I just, I don't want the doves in there or something or the squirrel. But raise these, these things up like that. Great cardinal feeder. This is called a, a Vista Dome. I like that. But I had to show you the big mama of all tube feeders. Aspects makes the feeder I love. It's made in America out in Rhode Island. And uh, good folks. And this is what I call the ultimate tube feeder feeding system for a, for a cardinal. Big old honking tube, because they eat a lot. Big old honking uh, lid on the top, because it keeps the squirrels off, helps keep the rain off. And a tray where the whole cardinal family can feed at once. So if you want the ultimate, and we'll be giving this away as one of the grand prizes, this is it. You know, about 130, 40, 50 bucks, but it's guaranteed for life like all their products. Some other things to remember is the bar needs to be away in most everything I'm doing. And you know, a tube feeder won't work if you don't have a tray on it. Cardinals won't fit. I've never seen one set on a perch in my yard. And neither will they stand right up here against this, because they kind of got a little belly like me. You need to bar away. So a feeder like this absolute one, one of my standby anti-squirrel ones, works great. Ms. Becca, I got another one for you. 
And then I love fly-throughs. This guy here is a good one as far as, you know, I'll, almost always I got a Cardinal Wheaton in this guy. And you know I like red feeders because I think they attract birds, migratory birds, quicker. Same way, this tray is big enough on this window feeder. We're going to talk about one problem with Cardinal's windows in the middle. But it's big enough that they can set on there safely. Uh, and then it's the same way, hopper feeder. You know I like this little recycled one. But notice, again... The old, he's got a place to set here that's a good distance away from where the seed comes out. So if you make your own wooden feeder, make sure you leave some space there, okay? So a really important thing. And uh, the thing I love, you know, I love these 10 by 42 optics from Shelter Grain, but the thing about Cardinals is sometimes I don't need them. That's the important part. What? 8 by 42, Miss Beck said. I am sorry. I, You know, I get going fast and I just forget things. Another tray feeder here I wanted to show you. Hope you don't. And they come in all shapes and sizes. We make a little small one, and then the folks from Nature's Way, they make one out of bamboo. And, and it has a rope hanger for something different. So whatever you want to do, if you want cardinals, and really if you want a lot of songbirds, my favorite, Peter, well, you can guess, and that's the next question. What is Birdman Mel's favorite feeder, okay? It says our cardinals in the western states. They're not west of the Rockies, other than that little band of them along the bottom of New Mexico and Arizona. I can't remember how to say it. They got a cousin out there. It starts with a uh, P. It's got a lot more white on it. It's close to a plumplica. You know, make up your name, old name there. They've got a cousin out there, but they're not out there. So that's why I told you every slang I said about Cardinals, really put it on a tray feeder uh, or put it in a feeder uh, like I've talked about. And we'll talk about your birds in just a second out west. So good time in there, okay? And I kind of got flying on down through here, so uh, I do want to remind you, and I want to, want to ask you the question, what attracts 10 times more birds than seed? That's the question you're going to win a prize on. So help me out there, what attracts 10 times more birds than seed? Okay, going to give you a hint now. You put this thing in here, and it's like, uh, you know, you say, well, you show the same old things. Well, the same old things work, and this little thing, this water wiggler moves the water. Oops, give it up to you. If you haven't got your answer in now, too late, but moving water attracts even more birds, and water attracts 10 times more than uh, not. And I got to show you again, you know, my son Grant designed this here floating leaf uh, bird bath solar thing. Again, I love this thing. The hummingbirds go through it. You can make it just bubble, or you can make a big old spray. I mean, it's pretty cool. You got like three different nozzles on there. I like that thing. What do I put them in? Tried to tell you guys over and over again. The secret, and we make this wooden thing here, the Looker guys taught us how to make these things from over in Milford, Illinois, uh, shallow bird baths. You know, they're not going diving, folks. Cardinals do not belong to the dive team. They, they like shallow, and even in this bird bath, to make them comfortable, I'll put a rock or two in there, and uh, I love these polypropylene liners because, you know, real easy to just toss that water like you should every week or so, take that brush I had there earlier, brush it out, put a little cap of that, Bird bath protector that, that uh, Songbird Essential makes in there every time you do that. And, hey, all that slum and slime and stuff, you just don't get it when you do that. Miss Beck, I'll hand this one to you, too. And then i got to remind you that, you know, I like that polypropylene. There are heated baths out there. And, you know, you don't, you don't plug them in this time of year. This one, it kind of tucks away. But for just pennies a day, you can keep the cardinals. And I see bluebirds coming more in the winter to water than anything else. So if you're going to go out and buy a bird bath, we got some beautiful ones. But think about one that's in it, okay? And uh, I mentioned earlier windows. I do want to hit something else as, as we wrap up cardinals. Cardinals and many other birds, you know, they see themselves in the window. And I told you that male and female, they defend their territory. So there are products that almost all your local wild bird suppliers have from a company called Window Alert that stick on that window. And this one's leaves. This one's a square. They're in hummingbirds, butterflies. It's of an ultraviolet type thing that you don't hardly see them, but the birds do. And I find these work, you know, pretty darn well. We're actually going to have a guy on in uh, early June, I hope, Brian Lentz with the American Bird Conservatory. He knows more about glass coll uh, collisions than anybody I know in the nation. So uh, see your local supplier for the window alert type products. They've got a spray that you use in combination. But stay tuned in June for, for the other things. And in fact, if you'll help me with that tray, before we leave Cardinals, Mother's Day is coming up. And I promised you a little bit about Mother's Day presents. Can you kind of hand these to me one by one? 
This is the same kind of stained glass thing, and this is one feeder the Cardinals feed from, although an awful lot of these end up in kitchens with potpourri on them. And uh, you got a wind chime, same sort of thing. Thank you, Becky. You know, this is not a clanger. I can't hang, I can't handle that clanging thing. I like that thing a lot. There's books, little journals. Uh, I, I, I keep a journal every day on what I see in the yard. It's fun to go back the next year. You know, things that you want to see a cardinal every time you look out the window? Well, that's what this thing and that stained glass was. Just a pretty little panel and a big honking one that we can put in a, in a stand for you if you want. So some fun things there. I think I'll just throw these little two things. I've got too many things in here, although I want to show this one. In about a week and a half, we are going to start a birds and beverage session. We'll let you know when. And this Cardinal Bottle Stopper was my key to remind you to tune in. We're going to talk about local uh, wineries, uh, distilleries, things to have some fun in the evening while you have a bird and a beverage, okay? And I got to tell the folks at Lufa, I really like their little pot scrubber deal. And again, the folks at Aspects make a really cool window feeder. So, you know, your local bird stores like us, they have and are can get like a gazillion things with cardinals on it. But they're things that's not everywhere. So go see those local guys, okay? Wow, I've been going pretty fast, haven't I? Better slow down just a touch. Do want to touch real quick on Western songbirds. You know, the reality, folks, is, I said this in one other show, goat finches and hummingbirds, that's about 80% of what we, most folks sell out there is feeders for that. But you do got scrubs and jays. There's a big old ring that I put a bunch of uh, whole peanuts in I meant to bring in here that the blue jays like here, but your scrub jays like them out there. You know, you've got, and I've, whoops, I was going to say, what bird goes, eh, eh. That's, that's a question, kind of sounds like, eh, eh, in the woods. Tell me there's two different types of that bird. Give me each of the names of that bird and, and you'll win a prize. And I'll come back to it in a second. There's also a bird that's out west and all over that says, kind of sounds like drink your tea. Drink your tea. Okay. Well, I'll give you long enough. The one that goes, egg, egg. Okay. Those, those old boys, those are the net hatches. In, in this part of the world, we have more white-breasted. Out west, you guys are lucky. You have even more red-breasted, too. And that, that drink your tea guy... That's the uh, toe. He, he kind of, you see him, he's kind of like scratching on the ground. He moves things around and he looking for insects this time of year, but he eats a lot of fruit, eats a lot of seeds. So pretty cool bird there. And then you got woodpeckers, you got chickadees. So basically go back and look at that cleaner section. You cover the woodpeckers then the chickadees, that sort of thing, the goldfinch. Uh, but then you've got some gross beaks and stuff. When I talked about cardinals today, that applies to those guys. Okay. So I covered you the best I could. Uh, I know Stan can answer your questions when he's on in a few weeks. I did promise an introduction to birdscape in your yard. And I, I've got more satisfaction out of following the directions. Uh, years ago, about 10 years ago, when we moved here, I said, hey, I'm going to do it right. I want to do it chemical-free. And a guy named Jeff Zimmerfield runs a long company, or used to his son. I, they tell me Jeffrey now runs it. But he taught me to do some things I want to remind you to do. Go chemical-free as you can. I use two products he taught me about. I don't get paid to promote, promote these. Corn gluten is all I fertilize with. It keeps things from germinating if you get it on at the right time. And I use cotton burr compost. Really good thing because it builds up the soil and doesn't tie up nitrogen. So Jeff, I learned something from you that I wanted to share with the world. The other thing is mow high. You know, we mow at three to five inches, that sort of high. We'll cover more detail as we get into how you certify your yard next week when we have a program. And, and don't forget, next week's program is going to go live along with a group called International Migratory Bird Day. Next Saturday is International Migratory Bird Day. So Susan Bonfield and, and that group, and check out their website, and we'll have a link to it for you. They do some marvelous activities all weekend all long to celebrate how interconnected the world is. So uh, keep that in mind as we go forward. But... I wanted to share a couple of my favorite books, particularly these first two for you guys in Missouri. Tried and True, Missouri Native Plants for Your Yard and Seedling Guide. You need to find a book like this wherever you're at because sometimes you can't tell what them, them perennials look like that first year or two after they come up. So these are two great guides to have. And thanks to my friend Julie, you'll find a link on our website that shows you where to get these. And then there's some other great books I love, Butterflying. Gardening with Native Plants, and we'll cover butterflies later. There's the Art of Hummingbird Gardening, and again, all these, maybe not today, but early next week, we'll have posted the author and all that. And I use, because we live here, Birdscaping in the Midwest, a guide to gardening with native plants. Like this one a lot, too. And one of these is actually from Skyhorse Publishing, one of the folks that have got me uh, 
trying to work on a book for them one of these days. So uh, having some fun that way. But remember, native plants and annuals is what I'm talking about. And I did finally get a list done. And we're going to post it up on the Birdman Mail website. And you'll be able to get a password there to be able to print off this thing. So you can take it in to your local lawn and garden center or your local hardware store and get your plants. And I'm going to name you a couple of them, but I'm not going to tell you them all. You're going to have to go to the website and grab the list. But it's people have been asking me, Mel, what are your favorite plants? Well, here's my favorites. Perennials, I love coneflowers because finches, hummingbirds, butterflies like them. I love American bittersweet for the bluebirds. I love cardinal flower, columbine, both of those uh, for my hummingbirds. Columbine blooms early, as we said. New England aster, butterfly milkweed, oh my God, one of the best pro bird ones I know. I'm going to hop down now to the annuals, and I've told you some other ones I like in other sessions. So keep in mind all of these because there's a reason you should. Under the annuals you go by, I love lantana. It blooms when everything else croaks in this hot sun. I love cigar plant. It, it, my hummingbirds like it, and I love pinta. And as you go through my list, you'll notice they're all either deep-throated plants or they're pad plants. Deep throat for the hummingbirds, pad plants for the, humming, for the uh, butterflies. So a bunch of fun, fun things. So uh, click on the website, birdmanmail.com. You'll find that list, and you can print it yourself. And remember, go to your local lawn and garden supplier or nursery or hardware store to get it. If you can't find one, there's a group, and we'll be putting the information up on it, called The Wild Ones. It's wildones.org, and no, we're not going off RPG here. It's not anything but just people that know a whole lot about native plants, and they many of them grow them. I belonged to it for many years and got busy, quit the last couple of years. Tell you what, signed up again this morning. It's a great organization to learn about native plants. Okay, time to slow up. You're going to win the grand prize binoculars right now. Whoever first enters two of Birdman Mel's favorite native perennial plants, and you got to get two of my favorite annual plants. Okay, be the first one to send both those answers, and you'll, and you'll win. And do please keep sending your questions. The ladies have a big old stack here, and if you noticed last week, we stayed like an hour and a half after. We will answer questions as long as you ask them. And please keep liking and forwarding us and commenting and posting videos, because, hey, we also keep drawing prizes for 15 minutes. So, you know, good thing you stayed. Do want to remember when you're doing that nature scaping, water's part of it. And we'll talk next week about dry bed screen, streams, bogs, that sort of thing. Uh, and we are doing that in, in conjunction with International Bi Migratory Bird Day. And so we will be especially doing some tips to attract migrating birds that you don't normally have in your yard. And some of them that are sometimes hard to see. So it's going to be a fun day. I think you'll enjoy it. So uh, we covered an awful lot today. I hope you had fun. I hope I brought a smile to your face. And I hope I gave you something that you can learn. You know, sit down with a child. I say this every time. Spend a few moments sitting there, just looking around, five minutes, touch, feel, uh, smell. And then, you know, you're going to learn a lot. And uh, I hope that it's been a good time for you. It's been a great time for me. And stay tuned next week. And look at that schedule we got coming up. We got a time when we got a kid's day, I think. We're authors on Wednesday. We got those experts on Tuesday night. My son, Wingman's going to be posting some stuff. So there's a lot of neat stuff coming to birdmanmail.com and birdmanmail Facebook. So thank you for staying tuned. We'll be posting the winners as fast as we can. But remember, keep commenting because you can win for 15 more minutes. And I'm also going to close like I always do. Remember, nature is a stress reliever from God. Take time today to listen to the birds sing.